Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. Today is Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. And thank you for joining our 10 o'clock uh, Board of Commissioners legislative meeting. I shall call this meeting to order and I will start with roll call. Board of Commissioners, when I call your name and district, please respond accordingly. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2, Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4, Commissioner Ann Jones Guider. Present. Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. Present. Board of Commissioners, we do have a quorum. Uh, Board of Commissioners, this morning we have the distinct pleasure of having Pastor Billy Godwin from Ephesus Baptist Church this morning. And I ask that you um, join him and all of us in the invocation this morning. And it's such a pleasure. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Godwin, to see you here this morning and as you shed blessings upon the uh, county, this Douglas County. So thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, once the invocation is completed, I ask that you join me in the pledge to the flag. Uh, Pastor Godwin, you have the floor. All right, thank you very much. And it's my honor to do that, to lead us in prayer today. So let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day that you have given to us. Lord, we know that every breath we breathe and every day that we live on this earth is a gift from you. And so, Lord, today we receive that gift, but we also, Lord, realize that our our gift to you is what we do with it. And so today we want to use this day in a productive way. We want this day to uh, to be a day in which we can look back and say that we did the things that mattered. And I pray that for these commissioners today. Lord, I, I thank you for the tremendous uh, responsibilities that you have called them to. God, I know that they each take them very seriously. But God, we pray today that you would give guidance, that you would help each commissioner, that you would uh, bless each leader in our county, Lord, to, to make sure that they stand up for what is right. God, I pray that they would act according to righteousness and wisdom and, and love. God, the, the tremendous responsibility that they have to, to truly uh, help people to flourish in this county. I just ask God that you'd allow that to happen. And Lord, let them know, help them be creative, help them, God, to see things in new ways. And, and God, also, I pray for unity. I pray, Lord, that they would come together as they see those things. And, uh, and Lord, that they would stand for, for what is right. And God, also for one another and Lord, for this county. We pray for our nation right now in the midst of all the struggles that we have, Lord, in so many different ways. And God, we know that you are sovereign and in control. And we look to you today. Because, God, we know that you are the true answer to what we struggle with. We pray your blessing, Lord. We pray your blessing upon this county. We pray your blessing upon our nation. And, God, help us to look to you for all the things that we need. And, God, today we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, so much, uh, Pastor uh, Godwin. We really appreciate you being here. And thank you for shedding that power of prayer upon the Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, if you please, if you would join me um, just reciting the Pledge of the Flag of Allegiance, please, to the Pledge of Allegiance. I will begin. I pledge allegiance it's to the flag to of the United States of America States of and to the Republic, to the Republic of which, which it stands, one nation under God, invisible. invisible. With liberty and yes. justice for all. All right. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. And uh, thank you again, uh, Pastor Billy Godwin, for again. Uh, you, you started off and it just really warmed my heart. This is the day that the Lord has made. So thank you uh, for shedding such a wonderful and powerful prayer on Douglas County this morning. Clerk, do we have public comment? We did not have anyone sign up for public comment, Chairman, um, but if there's a citizen online that would like to speak regarding an agenda item, can you please let me know? Thank you, Chairman. It doesn't appear we have anyone that uh, wishes to speak. Okay, thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, before we start our meeting this morning, it has come to my attention we need to, and certainly it's your pleasure, need to table an item to uh, um, 
to further notice uh, and this item is in our consent agenda so i would like to call for a motion to table an item and uh, would appreciate your concurrence this morning for the commission the item is related to project arla and uh, for the participation in the douglas uh, county tax savings incentive plan for commission, we have a motion to table the resolution approving the application of project arla for participation in the douglas county tax savings incentive plan at this time so move do we have a second second okay we have a motion and a second any discussion board of commissioners we have a motion and a second and i'm clerk i'm assuming you need us to vote manually on this one yes ma'am okay board of commissioners we have a motion and a second when i call your district uh please respond accordingly district one yes district two yes district three yes district four yes chairman yes we have a 5 unanimous vote to uh, table this uh, item until a later date. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. And we'll move right on into our meeting this morning. Again, we would like to start, I would like to start with the approval of the minutes, Board of Commissioners. You have the Commission Minute Meetings of, uh, of February 16, 2021, the Work Session uh, Minutes of February 15, 2021, and the Executive Session Minutes of February 15, 2021. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to clarify for the clerk, do we have the full rec recording of the meeting uh, for the 16th? Um, specifically, uh, at the end, it was cut off and um, citizens were concerned about our, our open meeting. Um, did at least your written comments, were they captured? Um, yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, Commissioner. I did capture the minutes and I did I did look back onto our video posted on the website and the entire meeting is recorded. Okay. We will we'll look further into this for a final resolution, but I just wanted to capture for the moment you got at least a written minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, if there are no other turn off there. Someone needs the microphone. I ask everyone to please mute your mic microphones. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners. Okay. Chair, I just want to, to, just, mm -hmm. just want to comment in, in reference to Vice Chairman Robinson and, the, and thank you, Lisa, for those comments in reference to the, the videotaping and all that good stuff and how it cut off. Uh, yes, Vice Chairman Robinson, that was actually addressed and um, TJ reposted the correct non-cut off portion of the meeting, uh, however it happened, but uh, he sent out an email, I think, to Ken, you, Madam Chair, and myself, I think I remember mm -hmm. seeing that stated kind of what happened. Uh, it's kind of one of those stories that kind of the way it was being fed and how he did it, but it was all corrected though, so, uh, Kelly. So he sent you over a link, Kelly, that addressed this, your portion, if you want to see it that, from that perspective, but the citizens overall could see the, it in its entirety online. So we capture it all. So there's nothing missing from the minutes nor from the video itself. Okay, and I yield back. Thank you, program uh, chairman. Um, um, the chairman of our program committee has just announced that that uh, information has been captured and the, and the tape has been, uh, of course, it maybe was lost in cyberspace, but it has been recovered, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. So if there are no other corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made. No, I, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't want to gloss over this. It wasn't lost in space. It was um, cut off. There's a difference. Uh, it, it was stopped, so let's, I'm, I'm, we'll leave this alone. Um, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Let it go. Okay. okay. All right. Being none, the minutes stand approved, Board of Commissioners, and, and those corrections will be noted. Board of Commissioners, this morning we have uh, proclamations. We have three. The first proclamation is recognizing Kingsway Varsity Board Boys Basketball Team for their C. Uh, G, I'm sorry, GCAA state championship win. And this proclamation will be read by our own Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Commissioner Thank Mitchell, you have the floor. And Madam Chair, that's uh, uh, GCAA. Just okay. Right. And I, yeah, I got to know how to say it. C I W A G I. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Okay. In recognition 
Uh, this proclamation is a recognition to the Kings Way Varsity ba Boys Basketball Team for their 2021 GCAA State Championship win. Okay. Whereas Kings Way Christian School has been open in Douglas County for 47 years, and whereas Kings Way Varsity Boys Basketball Team participates uh, with the GCAA Conference in the sports of basketball, and whereas the Kings Way Vars Kings Way Varsity Boys Basketball Team won the GCAA State Championship on Saturday, February 13th, 2021 in McDonough, Georgia against the Bine uh, Academy from Albany, Georgia. And whereas the Varsity Boys have won five straight GCAA State Championships uh, from, 2020, from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and now 2021. And whereas Along with uh, five championships, the team has acquired a record during these five years of 100 wins and six losses. And whereas in recent years, the Crusades have uh, been able to beat not only the local teams, Atlanta teams, but also teams throughout the state and outside in tournaments. And whereas the Kings Way athletic department is guided by the tradition of the King's Way Christian School and is committed to providing a well-rounded program for student athletes. The athletic department provides these athletes with a program that is not only physically challenging, but once their future promotes the spiritual and academic values of the Christian life. And whereas Kingsway recognizes and foster the development of commitment and sportsmanship and instills in all athletes a sense of accomplishment. This achievement has spanned from periods of more than 35 years. And whereas uh, Kingsway seeks to create an environment in which all athletes develop a sense of self-esteem and dignity in a Christian setting that is both moral and caring. Now, therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, on behalf of the citizens of Douglas County, are proud to recognize uh, and congratulate the Kingsway Varsity, Bas Varsity, Varsity Boys Basketball Team and its coaches for the team's astonishing accomplishments of their five straight GCAA state championship victories. So proclaimed on this date of March 2021, signed by uh, the chairman, District 1 commissioner, District 2, 3, and 4. And uh, that's the reading of that proclamation. And congratulations to, the, to my uh, dear varsity boys basketball team on a job well done. Madam Chair. All right, thank back. you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Certainly, uh, congratulations again, and thank you. You can tell I don't know too much about basketball because it's <laughs> supposed to be double A, not just CG. I said GCAA, so I excuse my lack of knowledge for basketball, but I do want to commend Kingsway Varsity uh, Boys Basketball Team for their pursuit of excellence for five straight consecutive years. That's huge, and this is uh, uh, worth recognizing and celebrating. So thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell, for taking the time to celebrate uh, our wonderful Kingsway Bas uh, Varsity Boys Basketball Team. And this school has existed here in Douglas County for 47 years. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second. second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Commissioner Carthen. Madam Chair, thank you so much. And thank you for reading that, um, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, great job. Uh, 
Madam Chair, I just want to say congratulations to Kingsway. Uh, the fact that they have won five consecutive years and against amazing teams. I tell you, the Georgia Christian Athletic Association allows for um, our boys and girls who attend private Christian schools to be able to compete on levels that um, sometimes people would think that they can't. But Kingsway Christian um, School has showed, yes, we can. Um, and I'm a little biased because my girls did attend Chris, uh, Kingsway for um, a, a few years and uh, and were a part of the girls basketball team. So um, they got their start there. So I am just extremely proud of Mr. Conway and the whole team over there at Kingsway Christian Center. Kudos to you boys for doing this and especially during a pandemic. You didn't let up. Your athletic skills were displayed and you came home with the win. So congratulations. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. And again, thank you, Commissioner Mitchell, for reading. So we have a motion and a second if there's Madam no motion. Ma ma okay. Madam Chair, just one, one last discussion, uh, if, if I could, please. Yes, Commissioner is, Mitchell. Is there anybody online uh, representing Kingsway, the team or, or anything that might want to say some great things about how great the kids are and about how they kind of pursue such great excellence in what they do? So I just want to make sure we give them an opportunity. Oh, there we go. Okay. Be on mute there, my friend. Mute there, my friend. Hey, there you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That is so amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for taking time to honor our team uh, this morning. And we have most of our guys here today, but it definitely was, it's been an amazing run these last five years and the determination, the hard work that these guys have uh, put into the season, uh, even the seasons prior to this one, but definitely has been challenging through the, uh, the COVID times. Uh, we actually had uh, three different games that were uh, canceled, whether the other school had to postpone or we had to postpone. Uh, we actually had a couple boys that had to miss some time uh, due to being quarantined, but yet the determination to continue to fight through all that. And uh, we had a few injuries that we had to suffer along the way, um, but the guys fought back and uh, did an amazing job to uh, to, to uh, consecutive, get this consecutive win. But thank you so much for your time that you guys have taken to honor our group of, of young men. They definitely honored uh, our county and with the way that they played and their attitude and their abilities uh, that the Lord has given them. But thank you so much this morning for this uh, great honor that you guys have bestowed on our school and our team. And Coach Mathis, I just want to add, though, thank you and, and your team of coaches. And I know I, I, I've, I've been on that coaching side of the fence and coaching the Winston Raiders on many years in the past. And I know it's it's not an easy task, but they've got great leadership and some and, and you, Coach Mathis, and, and your team and what you guys do. So continue the great work of excellence. And you guys are proving that it can be done. And thank you and, and, and job well done to the kids. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. I yield back, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mith Mitchell, and thank you and congratulations, uh, Coach uh, Matthew Nelson. Just so amazed at this wonderful moment, and congratulations. And if I could go back and revert to my good old cheerleader days, go Kings Way. You're number one. So congratulations. All right, we're gonna move on. Well, we, we have a motion in the second on the floor. We have a motion in the second. If there's no more discussion from our board of commissioners, please prepare to cast your electronic votes. And clerk, I am, I'm on the system. I, I'm here, so I'm able to cast my vote. The clerk will, uh, will render our results, Board of Commissioners. Just one second. Okay. Yeah, I'm frozen. <laughs> Do you need me to cast your vote? Yes. Yes. Uh, yep. It's froze. It's affirmative. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries 
five five zero. Okay, we have a five zero um, vote, uh, board of commissioners, and uh, the motion carries. So again, congratulation, uh, congratulations, Kingsway Varsity Boys Basketball Team, go, and it's G C double A. So congratulations again. We're going to move on to tab number five. Tab number five is recognizing Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake, 2021 American Business Woman. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Commissioner Carthen will be rendering this proclamation this morning. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Mm -hmm. Whereas the American Business Women's Association, also known as ABWA, named Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake, CEO of the Writing Pad LLC, the 2021 American Businesswoman, a national program that honors 10 outstanding members for achieving excellence in career, education, and community involvement. From those 10 honorees, better known as the top 10, one is selected to represent the association and all working women as the American Businesswoman of ABWA and Whereas the Douglas County Board of Commissioners is pleased to congratulate and celebrate Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake for being recognized as the 2021 American Businesswoman of the American Businesswoman's Association, which was announced on October 16, 2020. And whereas Dr. Johnson Blake is a member of the local ABWA League in Douglas County, located in Douglasville, Georgia, since 2016. And whereas Founded in 1949, ABWA's mission is to bring together businesswomen of diverse occupations and provide opportunities to help themselves and others grow personally and professionally through leadership, education, networking, and national recognition. And whereas the top 10 candidates are a paradigm for ABWA members who strive for excellence in their careers, their communities, and in the association. The top 10 is the highest honor awarded annually to members and recognized nationally at ABWA's National Women's Leadership Conference. And whereas Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake is honored, grateful, and humble for this national recognition and the opportunity to share her story with her ABWA sisters throughout the United States. Because of ABWA and its mission, Dr. Johnson Blake has grown as a small business owner and achieved her personal plight of service throughout the community and business network. Now, therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim and recognize Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake, 2021 American businesswoman, a resident of Douglas County, Georgia, and encourages women residents to join the American Businesswomen's Association to recognize the Douglas County Charter Chapter of ABWA as a business entity in our community for 35 years that helps women be recognized nationally. So proclaim the second day of March, 2021. Congratulations, Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake on your achievements. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen and Dr. Johnson Blake. This um, proclamation is so well deserved. You are definitely a trailblazer for community involvement and uh, you are the face of excellence in our county. I can really say that I see you out in every event, every occasion, and you are there leading the charge. So uh, thank you. Uh, this uh, uh, American Businesswoman uh, endorsement is certainly uh, long overdue for you because I've seen you out uh, on the trail since I've been in office and before office. So thank you for all of your hard work. Board of Commissioners, at your pleasure, we have uh, Vonda Thorpe here to rep represent uh, Dr. Uh, Johnson Blake. And just to, to share a few words this morning before I call for a motion, certainly at your pleasure, if you would allow me. Uh, Vonda Thorpe, are you on the line? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I am on the line. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here, Madam Chair, as well as the Board of Commissioners. Um, it is an honor and privilege to accept this proclamation on behalf of Deborah Johnson Blake, more known as Dr. DJ in our community. Um, she has done, as Madam Chair has stated, gone above and beyond, has even in our community received so many awards. Last year, the Douglas County Cha Chamber uh, Spirit uh, Award for the year, the Community Service Award, and then this 
year, uh, receiving Diplomat of the Year. So it's not a foreign thing for her to stand out and wherever she goes. And it is an honor and a privilege for me to be able to call her. And I'm blessed to be able to call her a great friend, business colleague, as well as my ABWA past president and sister. Thank you so much for honoring her today. And I accept this on her behalf. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Thorpe. Thank you. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, well, you've heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Lisa, mine still is not expanding, so it's affirmative. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 vote, and the motion carries. Congratulations, Dr. Deborah Johnson Blake, on your amazing award as 2021 American Businesswoman. So well deserved. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to tab number six which is proclaiming the month of March as Arts, Culture, and Humanities Month in Douglas County. And that will be read by our, our Director of the Culture Arts uh, Center, Emily Leitner. Are you on the line? Yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Whereas the Board of Commissioners are committed to promoting the arts, culture, and humanities in the Douglas County community, and whereas the arts, culture, and humanities embody much of the accumulated wisdom, intellect, and imagination of humankind, and whereas the arts, culture, and humanities enrich, enhance the lives of every American, and then whereas the arts, culture, and humanities play a unique role in the lives of our families, our communities, and our country. And whereas the nonprofit arts industry also strengthens our national economy by generating $166.3 billion in total economic activity annually, $27.54 billion in government revenue, and by supporting the full-time equivalent of 4.6 million jobs. And whereas the creative economy drives tourism and commerce, supports American workers, and makes up 4.2% of the annual GDP. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby complain March as Arts, Culture, and Humanities Month in Douglas County and call upon our citizens to celebrate, promote the arts, culture, and humanities in our community and to specifically encourage the greater participation by those said citizens in taking action for the arts, culture and humanities in their community. So proclaimed the second day of March, 2021. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Emily Leitner, our um, executive director for our um, arts and culture and humanities here in Douglas County. Thank you for leading the effort and the charge on arts and culture and humanities because uh, in previous times, those particular uh, items or uh, disciplines have been taken lightly, but it really arts. It's soothing. Uh, it uh, deals with stress, emotions. It puts us in a different place. And you have to have arts, cultures, and humanities in your life to really to be stable. So I appreciate all the hard work that, our, that you and your staff are doing to push uh, the initiative forward here in Douglas County and also our school systems and their full support regarding the arts, culture, and humanities. And uh, this uh, proclamation is so well deserved. Board of Commissioners, um, certainly I would like to call for uh, a motion, um, but do we have anyone on the line before I call for a motion that wanted to say something about arts and, and culture? Board of Commissioners, anyone want to speak toward the purpose? Okay. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, I heard Commissioner Carthen with the uh, motion and the second with Commissioner Guider heard her voice first. 
We have a motion and a second, Board of Commissioners. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, <laughs> Commissioner Carlton, you have the floor. Yeah, so I would just like to say, you know, on behalf of all that's going on in Douglas County and around the world, the arts community allows us, even during this pandemic, to have some sense of normalcy. I've seen the commitment that um, Ms. Leitner and the entire Cultural Arts Council over there has done. Um, they've made sure that there were virtual events. They've made sure that, you know, they continue to um, enlighten the community through their exhibits um, online. And I just want to say kudos to you, Ms. Leitner. Uh, it is not unnoted. I just want you to know we see you and you're doing a great job despite the pandemic that we're in. Um, so continued um, success and whatever we can do to help you in any way, I just want you to know we are here. So thank you so much for your commitment and, um, and all that you're doing within our community to continue to elevate us because this is one of those pillars that, you know, makes our quality of life better. So congratulations. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other comment? Board. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second, Board. Please prepare to cast your votes. Lisa, one more time, it's frozen. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay, motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 vote and the motion carries. Congratulations, um, uh, Emily Leitner and the Culture Arts uh, Center and all the great things that you're doing to promote the culture, arts, and humanities here in Douglas County. And I echo Commissioner Carthen, your uh, hard work is not unnoticed. And again, the, the word that uh, comes to mind for me uh, just wraps it up and in, in bundle it up with a bow is therapeutic. This is, uh, uh, arts is very therapeutic. It keeps us emotionally uh, sane, particularly during this COVID-19 uh, uh, unprecedented circumstance, and we need you. So thank you for what you're doing to lead this effort. All right, we're gonna move on to uh, Board of Commissioners. We have a public hearing, which is tab number seven. Um, tab number seven is to consider acknowledging concurrence with the owner's name changes to the following uh, private roads, Schofield Road to Endeavor Way and Keurig Way to Bang B Boulevard. Further to consider changing the name of the following public road in unincorporated Douglas County from Grisham Road off Caps Ferry Road to SQ uh, Road. Okay. Um, is Director Valentine on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll try to uh, share my screen so we can see a graphic of uh, these particular streets that we're uh, going to be referencing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, can you see the uh, the map on your screen? Yes, rather small, but I can see it. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna mm -hmm. try and make it a, a little larger. larger. Thank you. Okay, the the first one, and, and as you mentioned, Madam Chair, um, two of we have three streets that we're considering today. Uh, two of them are private roads. Uh, we generally um, have to uh, acknowledge or concur with a proposed name change from a private property owner uh, for purposes of uh, revising our official county map and also for purposes of uh, addresses that we may have to issue based on the new name. This one, uh, first one on the docket is Schofield Road uh, being renamed 
to Endeavor Way. Uh, the property in question, if you can see my cursor, is this one to the right here. Uh, this road is totally contained within this parcel. That is uh, off North Burnt Hickory Road and uh, at the very end of Industrial Access Way. Uh, so that that is the first one uh, for your consideration. Um, I will go to the second slide. Uh, this one also a private road that's being requested by the new property owner. Uh, the upper road here that you see is Blair's Bridge Road. Terminus Drive is right here on the cul-de-sac where it ends this driveway that comes in to the west of Terminus is now named Keurig Way and uh, was named, of course, after the business that occupies this building or occupied th this building. That, that entire uh, property has now been acquired by a new owner and they have requested this name change to Bank Boulevard and it is this uh, from the building access drive to terminus drive. The last slide is a public street uh, currently named Gresham Road. Uh, it is off of Caps Ferry and uh, the, there are six parcels that abut Gresham Road and uh, right now they are they carry addresses that are off of Caps Ferry. So even for post office purposes, uh, they do not recognize the name Gresham Road. So the request by all of the property owners that abut uh, Gresham Road is to rename it Eskew Road. Eskew is one of the families that lives on that street, the one that's lived there the longest. So this one, uh, because it is a public street, uh, requires a public hearing. Uh, a public hearing has been uh, duly advertised in the legal organ uh, for your consideration to acknowledge the, the two name changes requested by the private property owners uh, to concur with those. Uh, we typically review them in the county to make sure that they do not duplicate a, an existing street name or uh, are confusing in some other way or uh, spell an objectionable uh, word and uh, for purposes of addresses, um, issuing addresses to the new road name. So that gives you um, a sense of uh, the locations of these um, uh, roads that are wanting to be renamed for your consideration. And um, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you so much. Director Valentin, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions before I open the public hearing? Okay, thank you so much, Director Valentin. Board of Commissioners, I'm moving towards opening up this public hearing. Clerk, this public hearing is now open and to the citizens of Douglas County. Do we have yes, anyone here to speak or either clerk, you can lead it. You, I'm you can sorry. <laughs> Um, yes, ma'am. We didn't have anyone uh, register to speak, but if there's any public on the line that would like to speak regarding this public hearing, you may do so now. There doesn't appear to be anyone, Chairman. Okay, thank you so much, Clerk. Board of Commissioners being the one who's here to speak for or against this um, this particular proposal or this, uh, the, the change, the naming of these roads. This public hearing is now closed. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the acknowledgement and concurrence with the owners and name changes to the following pop, public uh, private roads, Schofield Road to Endeavor Way and Keurig Way to Bang Boulevard, and then to further consider changing the name of the following public road in unincorporated, uh, unincorporated Douglas County from Grisham Road off Caps Ferry Road to Eskew Road. Do we have a motion? So move. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes.
Madam Clerk, affirmative. Thank you. Okay. Okay, motion carries 5-0. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries for the commissioners. Thank you. We're gonna move on to our new business items. We have two business new business items. Uh, tab number eight is authorization to issue an RFP for tax allocation district consulting services to be funded through the economic development line item in the current 2021 budget. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. We have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. And Lisa, work with our vice chair if he, if he needs to yeah. provide you with a response. That's fine. Yes, it, it's locked. We'll take care of it later. It's affirmative, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Vice Chairman, I concur with you with technology. It's good when it's good, so I understand. So we we appreciate you uh, providing the response to the clerk verbally. That's fine. All right. Tab number nine, appointment of Nia Brown to the Douglasville Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority Board, effective April 3rd, 2021. Do we have a motion to approve? Do we have so a motion? Moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, please prepare to cast your votes. Affirmative. Okay. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk. And we're gonna move on to our consent agenda. Um, we are starting with tab number 11. We tabled tab number 10. Tab number 11 is authorization to implement the wireless telecom cost savings for Sprint T-Mobile as presented by the Profitability uh, Growth Value Creation PGV advisors at the work session on February 15, 2021. Tab number 12 is authorization to solicit bids for the 2021 tax anticipation note, TAN, in the amount of $12 million and authorize the county's financial advisor, Terminus, to assist in facilitating the transaction as recommended by the Finance Committee. Tab number 13, resolution, resolution to amend the 2021 budget for 2020 rollover encumbrances, grants, and projects. Tab number 14, approval to designate Rosalind Miller as an authorized representative for SPLOS requisition withdrawals. Tab number 15, approval to designate Rosalind Miller as an authorized signer to deposit and or withdraw funds from the local government investment pool. Tab number 16, authorization to approve Atlantic Coast Consultant Task Orders 2021-1 um, Groundwater monitoring and reporting services for the June event in the amount of $30,309 and 2021-2 remaining capacity report in the amount of $1,450 and 2021-3 groundwater monitoring and reporting services for the de December event in the amount of $20,080 and the task order number 2021-4. 2020-21 annual stormwater reports in the amount of $3,000 and the task order 2021-5 is 15 methane monitoring well installation and reporting in the amount of $58,300 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization to approve a deductive change order uh, number five in the amount of $37,713.53 
on the construction contract with Summit Construction and Development LLC on the Doris High Point Bakers Bridge Sweetwater Church intersection project as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to execute all related documents. Tab number 18, authorization to approve a change order number three in the amount of $14,312.56 on the construction contract with the El Selsor Construction LLC on the John West Bright Star Road intersection project to be funded from the 2016 SPLOST funds as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Last but not least, tab number 19, approval of selection of Martin Marietta as the vendor to provide gravel materials to the county when needed based on the unit price proposal pursuant to the solicitation 21-002 for use on in-house maintenance and construction projects as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any item? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. All right, uh, number, and if I got the numbers wrong, number 13, um, may I have um, Rosie Miller and, well, Jennifer Hallman until we, we make this, we agree this. So Jennifer Hallman, Director Hallman, and Rosie Miller, can you both be standby? Number 13, this is more educational, Director Hallman. So explain what this, this process is for the record. Sure. Um, <clears throat> this is what I normally call a housekeeping um, adjustment. Um, as we start closing out the prior year, tying up loose ends, um, there are usually funds that are encumbered with the purchase order, um, as well as maybe some funding that the board put it placed in the budget for a project to be completed and maybe it's not quite complete yet. Um, and those purchase orders were done um, for services or items or those purchase orders were issued for services and items that may not have either come in or finished providing the service by the end of the year. Um, as we go along to the first two months of the new year, um, we work in this department and determine which of those purchase orders are legitimate um, and that need to roll over to the uh, 2021 budget. When we roll those funds over and the um, item is received or the service is provided, then this allows for it to become budget neutral in the current year. Um, what we do in the 2020 budget uh, or the 2020 year, the prior year, is we assign fund balance um, for these projects that are we are rolling over or the encumbrances that we are rolling over. We assign fund balance, so we are pulling away from unassigned fund balance and assigning it for commitments made by Douglas County regarding purchase orders. Some of these are not, uh, uh, some of these are budget neutral in the sense that um, they are being rolled over because they are grants, meaning that the portion of the money that is being rolled over is being covered by a grant. So uh, it's a combination of purchase orders, grants, and just funding that was approved in the prior year budget that um, whether some or all of the funds need to be rolled over to the new budget uh, so that can be completed. Okay, all right, that's cl close enough for me. So let me extend my, my comment, which is, um, so this is considered closeout, all right? So wh where I'm trying to get to is at what point do we close 2020? 20 out is this considered the clock i see you're reconciling the budget but this, this is just what this is not the absolute final step this is just a step closer to finalizing uh 2020 we still have another week and a half of tying up loose ends uh, but most of those do not require uh, board approval they're just journal entries on our part but this particular uh step uh, as part of closing does require y'all's blessing and approval uh to roll these over okay so i mean so we're amending our budget Right? Did I read that right? We're amend What's the difference between amending and restating, or are they the same? Um, 
restating is more on the financial statement side where uh, you're actually amending your 2021 budget um, to cover these rollover projects that are already set aside on your financial statements as a signed fund balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I didn't want to go that deep. So where I was going with this is that um, as as a condition of my support, and it's sort of like that, uh, I'd like to see um, how we ended the budget year. What was our adopted budget for 2021? How do we end 2020? And when we get into this revisit, I want to see the implications of that. So I want to look at, I want to see three views. This is from Jennifer Roslin. I need three views. The next time we get together that reconciles adopted budget, um, obviously um, uh, what we ultimately you reconcile, you close out the year. In other words, what was reality? What we adopted, what was reality, and go forward based on whatever the revisit is. Can I get those three views, please, ladies? Um, yes, sir. That will be um, as soon as we tie uh, do the final adjustments, that will actually be in the finance committee report. Um, you will be able to see how we finished out the year compared to what the adopted budget was. Understood. I'd, um, I'd like to make that a, a direct um, delivery to me, please. Okay. All right. Thank sure. you. All mm -hmm. right. That's all I needed, Madam Chair. I just wanted to set expectations as we get to this final um, closeout and ultimately this revisit. So just those three views, please. Thank you. I yield the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Your, your mic, you need to unmute your mic. Your mic is muted. <laughs> okay. There you go. I'd like to comment on items 17 and 18, which are two projects that was in District 4. Um, we're closing out um, the intersection there at Doris High Point and Baker's Bridge and Sweetwater Church Road. Um, we're closing it out. Um, I think it it costs right at 700000 but we're going to get 345000 back from Paulden County because this was a joint venture with us. So this uh, will finalize all the, um, the work done there, and then we can bill Paulden County for their portion of it. Also, um, the uh, item number 18 about John West and West and Bright Star Road, um, <clears throat> this closes out that um, project. Uh, it was done in a timely manner. I will say kudos to you, Miguel, and, and the contractor. Uh, but um, I'm glad that this has been done um, during this time so that uh, when school starts back next year, it won't be a problem at all. It'll help facilitate the traffic there. So thank you. That's all. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider. All right. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. If there's no more discussion, we have a motion and a second. Clerk, please, that so we are, uh, prepare us to vote. Board of Commissioners, please vote accordingly, virtually. Yep, affirmative. Kind thank of clerk. You. Thank you, Vice Chair. We, you, you, you got it, right, Clerk? Yes, ma'am. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to our announcements. First of all, I would like to just extend a warm welcome to Rick Martin, uh, our Communications Director, who is has joined us and he's back on the scene. But before I yield to you, our Communications Director, I want to uh, carve out some time to allow our Board of Commissioners, if they had some any particular announcements that they would like to make, and then, of course, I will yield to you, uh, Director of Communications. Board of Commissioners, do you have any uh, announcements? And Vice Chairman, I'm going to, if you, if it's your pleasure, if you would just announce about your wonderful town hall that's coming up soon, if Absolutely. you want to take the lead on it for me. I'd be glad to take the lead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to the citizens of, of District 2, uh, this um, Saturday, it's going to be on a Saturday, Saturday, March 27th, mm -hmm. um, 2021 at 12 noon. I'm having a virtual town hall. This is my 
the annual spring, um, I won't call it a spring fling, but it's the annual town hall that I have in the spring. And our goal is um, obviously this is going to be on the heels of the revisit. So we're going to be talking about um, budget revisitation. Uh, we're going to be talking about strategic planning and priorities. Uh, we're going to be talking about the future of District 2. Where do we stand as a current state and where do we need to go? So we appreciate all of you um, logging on, looking for us on that day, Saturday, um, which is going to be March 27th, 2021 at 12 noon. More information is to come. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Any other announcements? Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. I would just like to say publicly how much I appreciate all the cards, the texts, the uh, calls, and the flowers that I received on the passing of my husband. Uh, it means a great deal to hear from employees and department heads, and and just um, I just want to thank the public too for their uh, support and prayers during this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guy. And again, deepest condolences and and I'm just so happy and proud about it, the outpouring of support that you have and, and, and you still have. So please, we're here for you. And I want to openly announce that. Okay, Board of Commissioners, anyone else have an announcement before I yield to our Director of Communications? Director of Communications, Rick Martin, welcome. And we're so happy that you're back and you have the floor to Thank make you, the announcements. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, along the same lines as uh, Commissioner Goddard had mentioned, I want to thank everyone for their thoughts and prayers, specifically the, the commissioners, uh, your messages uh, uh, sent and uh, was well received on behalf of my, my family. <clears throat> so thank you for uh, the welcome back, uh, as well to department staff and uh, members of the community uh, also. So thank you. Uh, on to the announcements. Uh, we have three, and uh, we first begin with uh, the fire department's uh, community service project. From February 22nd to March 8th, the Douglas County Fire Department will be collecting new teddy bears to send to victims of the Texas snowstorm. Uh, these bears will bring a sense of comfort to little ones in a time of chaos and stress. Uh, the public and everyone is invited to visit any of the 10 local fire stations or headquarters between hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. for a contactless drop-off. Station locations and more information can be found on CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. And if you had not heard earlier this morning, uh, a local radio station, 94.9 The Bull, uh, announced uh, this morning on the radio that they're donating 1,000 teddy bears, uh, 1,000 teddy bears uh, to the uh, campaign. So I wanted to share that as well. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners is offering COVID-19 relief financial assistance to Douglas County citizens. The Douglas County COVID-19 Relief Fund will provide rental, mortgage, and utilities assistance to Douglas County citizens in need. The funds will be administered to the citizens of Douglas County by Vision 21 Concepts Incorporated, a local nonprofit organization. The Relief Fund intake application can be completed and submitted with supporting documentation via the Vision 21 Concepts Incorporated website at www.v21concepts.org. That's www.v21concepts.org. And that's starting March 5th. More information on the Douglas County COVID-19 Relief Fund can be found on the county's website, celebratedouglascounty.com, or email Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director of External Affairs, at T. Stewart Stanley at co.douglas.ga.us. Free COVID-19 testing is being offered at Derelict Park, 2171 Mack Road in Douglasville. It's a drive-through testing situation that's available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. No appointment is necessary. And this completes today's portion of the announcements. I yield back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Director Martin. And we really, again, welcome, I welcome you back. And uh, we're so happy to see that your health is just improving day by day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. 
Board of Commissioners would like to extend a, a special appreciation and, and a special thanks and gratitude to you, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, Commissioner Carthen, and Commissioner Guider, Guider for supporting and leading the efforts to mitigate COVID-19 here in Douglas County and also to provide assistance to our citizens. You all have gone far beyond the ordinary to exude uh, the, that you will represent and, and support our citizens in a time of need. Uh, we have some more um, activities coming down the pike to look even at supporting our small businesses. We are uh, put uh, some money on the table regarding vaccinations to testing, tracing, and treatment. And my heart is warmed. We have put uh, quite a few, uh, um, not only money, but efforts into our education uh, component. And you all have stood with me all the way with this health care <laughs> initiative. Healthcare is uh, amazing. It's it's it, it's complicated. Uh, it has some of the terminology that's sometimes full of rigor, but I can truly say that I am proud to be uh, to serve among board members who truly get it and understand the importance of what we need to do to mitigate this uh, unprecedented virus. I am proud of our mass vaccination uh, site that is at the Sears parking lot location. We are addressing not only our senior citizens, but I believe and understand, it is my understanding that we will be uh, certainly moving to our next tier uh, within the next week or so, and that will be addressing our teachers, which are our educators and also, also the administrators in that area. And we are continuing to address the, um, the uh, with vaccinations or provide vaccinations for our, for our public health uh, uh, staffs and uh, staff and employees and look forward to one day when it's very soon when it'll be uh, available to everyone. Uh, we do have Johnson & Johnson that has hit the scene, which is a new vaccine. It gives us now three tools in our toolbox. We have Moderna, Pfizer, Pfizer, and now J&J. &J. So uh, I'm excited and we will keep you posted all, every step of the way. Uh, I just want to leave with the final words before uh, we uh, pause for recess. We have a PNZ meeting tonight, Board of Commissioners. I want to leave the citizens with my, I'm preaching to the choir, but I want to keep preaching. Wear your mask, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, and please continue to watch your social distance, even if you've received the vaccine. We all just want to keep our guards up because we don't want to let them down. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come at this time, uh, we will uh, pause for recess and we will reconvene tonight at six o'clock. Thank you, and I will see you at six.